friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another WW Weekly Meal Prep. You guys, I cannot wait to share my recipes with you. We're actually making four recipes this week. One of them is really simple. We're doing two for breakfast, one for lunch, and an amazing dessert, the dessert. Let me just tell you how delicious it is and wait until you see the smart points. You will not believe it. So if you wanna see what I have in store for breakfast, lunch, and a little sweet treat for the week, then just stay tuned. breakfast this week, I'm going to be making ham and cheese hash waffles. I've actually never made these before, but they are all the rage and I am very excited to give them a try. I am kind of over eggs at the moment, so I wanted to have a breakfast that would fill me up, provide me with protein, be delicious, and not include eggs just for a week, just to give my body a break from eggs. So here's what you're going to need for my hash waffles. So of course you're going to need some shredded hash browns. You do want them to be thawed because you're going to have to squeeze the liquid out and put them into your waffle maker. Cheese of your choice. I'm just going to use the Trader Joe's Light Mexican Blend. It's only two smart points for a quarter of a cup, so it's lower than most of the light shredded cheeses out there. Also, some ham or whatever meat you want to do. Cooking spray for your waffle iron. Light butter, salt and pepper, and of course, a waffle iron. So with my hash waffles, I decided that I wanted to make some blueberry muffins. So I purchased this Lacanto blueberry muffin mix, sugar-free, sweetened with monk fruit off of Nutrition's website. You can see here that it is keto, one net carb, dairy-free, and gluten-free. So if you're someone really watching your carbs or can't have dairy or gluten-free, I'm really excited to try these muffins out. They are only 35 calories per muffin, so they are only one smart point. You can't beat that for a blueberry muffin. So we're gonna try these. I really like monk fruit. It doesn't have a weird aftertaste like some of the other artificial sweeteners. So I'm gonna make these. I'll let you guys know how they are, but I'm gonna have a blueberry muffin along with a hash waffle for my breakfast. So let's get started. So to get started on our hash waffles, I have my defrosted hash browns here in my bowl. To that, I am adding four tablespoons, I weighed this out on my food scale, of melted butter to my hash browns. And I'm just gonna give that a stir. I just wanna make sure that that butter gets nice and incorporated in with all of my hash browns. It's going to add that delicious flavor, but it's also going to help bind the hash browns in the waffle maker. And then we're just gonna add some salt and pepper and then we're ready to start putting together our waffles into our waffle maker. I have mine warming up now, so let me get this all mixed together and I'll show you the next step on our hash waffles. Now we're ready to make our hash waffles. So I have my waffle iron warmed up. I'm going to go ahead and just spray it with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. And I'm going to add in my hash browns. We want to have enough hash browns to fill our containers, and this needs to make five servings. So it's about a half of a cup per little waffle square. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my hash browns. Oh, yum. And I am just kind of pushing these down just to make sure they fit nicely into the squares of my waffle maker. And then to that, I'm going to add just a couple tablespoons of my shredded cheese over the top of my hash browns. And again, we have three quarters of a cup of cheese for all of our hash waffles. And then same with our ham, we're gonna do a couple of tablespoons of our diced ham as well over the top of our waffle. And we're gonna have a delicious ham and cheese waffle. You can't beat it. So add your ham. And then lastly, we're gonna add just a little bit more hash browns over the top just to kind of cover up and seal in the ham and the cheese. So again, you wanna do about a half of a cup per square total, including what is on top. And then we are going to close down our waffle maker and we're gonna let it cook and I'll be back to show you our completed hash waffle. 
All right, look at our hash waffle. Doesn't that look amazing? So I'm just gonna let it sit here for just a second. It pops out really easy. And then I'm just going to set it aside and repeat this and make four more of the ham and cheese hash waffles, you guys. Yum. So I'll be back to show you our completed waffles. on our blueberry muffins. Our waffles are done and cooling. So I'm gonna add my package of Lakanto blueberry muffin mix. You guys, this mix is packed with blueberries. Look at all those, yum. And then to that, I'm going to add three eggs and I'm just following the directions on the back of the package. And I am substituting the quarter cup of oil with, or I'm sorry, half a cup of oil with half of a cup of unsweetened applesauce. Very much a WW dupe for oil. And then I also just need three quarters of a cup of water which was also on the package ingredients. So I'm gonna give this a good mix, make sure everything gets nice and combined, and we're ready to put our muffins into the oven. It is that fast, you guys, that incredibly quick. So I am going to grab out my muffin tin and let's get our blueberry muffins into the oven. I went ahead and grabbed out my muffin pan, sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray, Pulled out my large scoop. I did buy these scoops off of Amazon. They are linked in my Amazon store. You get three scoops, three different sizes for like $10. Really inexpensive. So we want a total of 12 muffins. So I'm gonna fill them about three quarters between, yeah, about two thirds to three quarters full in the muffin tin. And that allows them a chance to rise as well. And this mix should give us a total of 12 muffins. So I'm gonna get my muffin cups filled with this delicious mix. And we'll be ready to put these into the oven at 425 until they come out, toothpick comes out clean. So I'm gonna get these filled up and I'll be back to show you the finished muffins and we'll get these into the oven. So here are our blueberry muffins. They ended up being about half full in order to get 12 muffins. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'll be back to show you our completed muffins and we'll put together this week's breakfast. I just pulled our monk fruit muffins out of the oven. You guys, these look amazing. Look at that, so good. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a moment. I'm gonna pop one out, put it in my meal prep container. I'll show you guys what the completed breakfast looks like and give you the smart points. So here is my completed breakfast for this week. I am really excited for my breakfast. So let me show you what I'm having. So first I have one of my ham and cheese hash waffles. Now when you reheat these, you can do it in the microwave. You could pop it in your air fryer or a toaster oven if you have one at work or home. If you wanna get it crispy, I'm probably just gonna microwave it. I don't mind my hash browns not being super crispy. So I did try a little bit of this, it's amazing. So good. So I'm having one of my ham and cheese hash waffles that is a total of six smart points. And then I'm also having one of my blueberry muffins. These muffins, one point. That's it you guys, one point for a blueberry muffin. I did have one for breakfast today. And what it reminds me of is the Jiffy blueberry muffin mix that you can buy in the grocery store. That's what it tastes like. It is really, really good. No weird aftertaste, delicious. So I have six points for my hash waffle, one point for my blueberry muffin, and then I bagged up some strawberries and I did have a couple bags of grapes left over from last week. So this is gonna be my fruit for breakfast. So my entire breakfast, hash waffle, muffin and fruit is only seven smart points. You can't beat it seven smart points for this amazing breakfast. So for my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making burger bowls. Now I'm gonna make mine a little bit different than the original recipe. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through what I'm doing versus the recipe. The ingredients are the same, it's just the preparation's gonna be a little bit different. So what you're going to need for your burger bowls. You're gonna need some chives. If you wanna to top your burger bowl with some chives, I'll probably add some G Hughes barbecue sauce as well, but you can go ahead and pick whatever toppings you want for your bowl, light butter, Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, garlic powder and seasoning salt, two pounds of 96 for extra lean ground beef, mushrooms. 
I'm gonna do a mix of fat-free cheese and light cheese that'll just cut down on the points. And lastly, some center cut bacon. So let's get started on our burger bowls. The first thing we need to do to get started on our burger bowls is cook our bacon. So I've put mine here on a sheet with some foil. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 until the bacon is cooked and nice and crispy. We only need 10 slices for our burger bowls, but I'm just gonna cook it all down. My husband loves leftover bacon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss the extras into the fridge. While our bacon's in the oven, we're gonna get our hamburger cooking down. So to it, I'm going to be adding some of my Trader Joe's or whatever seasoning salt that you have. It calls for Lowry's, about two and a half teaspoons. So I'm gonna make sure I add enough of the seasoning salt. We're also going to just be adding in a little bit of garlic powder. And the recipe wants about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we're gonna add in three teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. So I'm just going to wing it. I don't ever measure my sauce. And then lastly, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of black pepper and we're gonna cook our hamburger down. Our hamburger is cooking right along. And next to that, I've added four tablespoons of light butter to a small pan. And to that, I'm going to add in my mushrooms because we wanna saute our mushrooms down in the butter. And that is one of our toppings for our fully loaded burger bowl. So I'm gonna let these mushrooms get nice and sauteed. So we are ready to assemble our burger bowls. So I have my meat cooked up here. The original recipe wants you to take your meat and form it into a bowl and bake it in the oven and actually eat out of the meat bowl. But I decided because I'm meal prepping this that it would be easier just to use my meal prep bowls and add all of my burger bowl ingredients to that. So I have my meat. Our sauteed mushrooms look amazing. And then I have a cup of fat-free cheese and a cup of light shredded cheese. 10 slices of center cut bacon, and then I just went ahead and diced up some chives. So let's put together the bowl. So we are going to want one sixth. We're actually gonna make six burger bowls. That gives me an extra one to have for lunch on today, on Sunday. So I'm gonna divide my mixture up as evenly as I can between six bowls. So I have some hamburger in the bottom. To that, I'm going to add a few of my sauteed mushrooms. And again, we do wanna get six bowls out of what we have here, so we don't wanna go too crazy, as delicious as these look. And then we're gonna add a little bit of cheese. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of sprinkle of cheese on that layer. And again, this cheese has to go between six bowls, so we don't wanna go too crazy with that either. And then I'm going to just break up two slices of my center cut bacon so that we have two slices of bacon per bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This particular center cut bacon, the private selection from Fred Meyer, is actually two slices for one smart point. So it's a really, really good deal. All right, so I've added my bacon and then I'm going to just do another little sprinkle of cheese over the top of all of that as well. And then just a little sprinkle of my chives. Oh my gosh, this looks so incredibly delicious. So that is my burger bowl. This is a low carb lunch, you guys. There is no carbs in here at all. I am going to add some Jihoo's barbecue sauce to this. I'll show you how I'm gonna package that up and then I'll show you what else I'm gonna be having with lunch. But this is the main part of my lunch. Doesn't this look delish? Here's what I'm gonna be having for lunches this week. I am extremely excited about my lunch. So what I have here is my fully loaded burger bowl. And this again is a low carb recipe. So if you're looking to kind of lighten up your carbs, I just wanted it because it sounds amazing. So for my burger bowl, including, I have a little container here of the G Hue sugar-free barbecue sauce, that is zero smart points. So for my bowl, it is a total of six smart points, and that includes the meat, the bacon, the cheese, everything. So I'm gonna be having my burger bowl. I'll be cutting up this watermelon, and I'll have some slices of watermelon with my burger bowl. And then I'm going to have one serving of my Fiber Gourmet Thinables. These are the Sharp Cheddar. And you can have 30 of these crackers for only two smart points. That's it, and they taste like Cheez-Its. Now, regular Cheez-Its are about five smart points for less crackers, so 
I love the Thinnables from Fiber Gourmet. They're amazing. You can purchase these off of the Nutrition website. There is a link down in the description box. It'll take you directly to Nutrition, and you can shop your little heart out and find all of the WW things that you can't live without. In fact, my barbecue sauce came from that website as well. So I'm going to be having 30 of my sharp cheddar Thinnables for two smart points. So that makes my entire lunch of healthy filling protein eight smart points. For a dessert or sweet treat this week, I'm going to be making a lemon zucchini cake. My husband is so excited about this recipe. So he eats a lot of the food that I prepare as well, so I'm not just the only one eating it. And for those of you that question the food that we're making, do we eat it? Absolutely. We eat all of it. We very rarely throw away food. So it's definitely not just for this channel. It is what we are eating throughout the week. I know it seems ridiculous that we have to even bring that up, but it is a question sometimes of people. So let me show you what is in our lemon zucchini cake. So first you are going to need some sugar alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using stevia in the raw, some all purpose flour, unsweetened applesauce, whatever powdered sugar or powdered sugar substitute that you wanna use, I'm gonna be using the sucrin icing, salt, baking powder and baking soda, eggs, vanilla extract, I am obsessed with the Trader Joe's, it's so good, lemons, zucchini of course, and some light butter. So let's get started on our lemon zucchini cake. The first step in our bread is I went ahead and zested two of my small lemons or you could zest one large lemon. To that, I'm going to add one cup of the stevia baking mix. And I'm just going to stir this until the sugar becomes a little moistened from the lemon zest and the lemon zest is fully mixed in really well with the sugar. After you've combined your sugar and your lemon zest, we're gonna go ahead and add in one teaspoon of our vanilla extract. I'm also going to add in one quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, three eggs, and one cup of unsweetened applesauce, which is essentially the replacement of the oil in the recipe. And then you can use a hand mixer or just really give this a good mix, whatever you prefer. We wanna make sure we get all of our ingredients fully incorporated. Once your wet ingredients are mixed together, you can either combine your dry in a separate bowl or directly to the mix. I'm gonna do it directly to the mix. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour. And I always like to give it a nice stir before I add in my leveling agents, my baking soda, baking powder. If you are going to combine your dry ingredients separate, just make sure that you give it a good mix as well. You wanna make sure everything gets nice and combined together. So there's that. And then I'm going to add in just a pinch of salt. Salt always helps enhance the flavors of baked goods. And then I'm going to add two teaspoons of baking soda. So we'll add in one and two, and then we're gonna do half of a teaspoon of our baking powder. And then we're going to give that a nice big stir until everything is nice and incorporated all of our wet and our dry ingredients. The last step is we are gonna go ahead and add in our two cups of grated zucchini. Now I grated mine really, really fine. I use a zester. That's how I prefer my zucchini in my bread. I think it adds really good texture and moistness, but it doesn't give you those big chunks of zucchini. I don't really like that when I'm eating my zucchini bread. So we're just gonna gently fold in our zucchini and then we're ready to add this delicious, look at this, yum, to our bump pan. Last step is we're gonna go ahead and grease our bump pan with some nonstick cooking spray. Really grease your bump pan, otherwise it likes to stick in to the crevices of your pan. And then we are just going to add in our cake mix, just all around our bump pan here until it is nice and level. So add in all the deliciousness. So there is our lemon zucchini cake. Doesn't that look amazing? So we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for 35 to 40 minutes or until our toothpick comes out clean. And when it gets a little bit closer to finish cooking, we'll go ahead and put together our glaze. Oh my, I just pulled the lemon zucchini cake out of the oven, you guys. 
This looks so good. My house smells lemony and fresh. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna push this aside, let this get a little cool, and let's put together our glaze. So let's put together our glaze. So what I have here is one cup of the Sucrin powdered sugar. I'm going to add three tablespoons of melted light butter, about two tablespoons of fresh zested lemon or squeezed lemon. I may add the rest, let me see how thick this is, and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'm going to give this a stir and this is going to be the glaze that is gonna go on top of our cooled lemon zucchini cake. I am, you guys, I'm incredibly excited about this recipe. And wait until you guys hear the smart points. Once your cake is nice and cool, it is time to glaze it. So I've got our glaze. We're just going to pour it over the top of our bundt cake. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looks amazing. Allow it to drip down the middle, drip down the sides. That's what makes bundt cakes so delicious is that delicious coating of the glaze. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my glaze. I'm gonna give my bundt cake just a little bit longer to allow the glaze to dry a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and cut it into the servings and give you guys the smart points. Wait until you hear the smart points on this. You're not gonna believe it. So here is our completed zucchini lemon, lemon cake. So this is a salad plate, you guys. This is one eighth of the bundt cake. So you're gonna cut this into eight equal servings. So that is a serving, huge. This entire serving, including the glaze, is only three smart points. So you can have this piece of lemon zucchini cake for three smart points. So here's what I'm planning on taking for snacks for this week. So first, I always want a little something sweet during the day at some point. So I'm gonna be bringing one of my two packs of the Choco Ripe Peanut Butter Cups. These legitimately are a pretty solid dupe for the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. They are so good. And you can have this entire package of two peanut butter cups for two smart points. You can't beat it. So you can have that sweet treat for two points. All of the Choco Right products are amazing. I love their vanilla cream, ones of these little chocolates as well. You can purchase these off of the Protein Wise website. There is a link down in the description box. Not only will it give you $10 off your order, so you can get $10 worth of free product, it also gives you free shipping at a certain order amount. So check out Protein Wise. They have an amazing array of WW products. So this is definitely on my snack list for the week. Also, I've been loving these Planters Nutrition Brain Support and Heart Support Squares. I heard about these from my friend Barrett Pastor on YouTube. These are amazing. You can have one serving for five smart points. So not bad. Sometimes I only pop one or two in my mouth. So it's really only one or two points, but it's just a nice, healthy solid snack to have on hand so i'll be bringing those oh and just so you guys know this particular one it has cranberries almonds pumpkin seed kernels and walnuts so really really delicious and then of course for my morning snack which i have every day i'm gonna have a built bar so this week i am packing a lemon cinnamon the cinnamon bear is no longer available i really like this flavor but it was pretty controversial some of you like it some of you don't the blueberry cheesecake. I think you can still order this one. The mint brownie delight, which is literally my fave. And then I really like this one. This is the new flavor, the mango chocolate cream. This one is extremely good as well. These built bars are only three smart points a piece. They have 15 grams of protein and six grams of fiber. So they keep you nice and full but they taste like a candy bar. Like I'm not kidding, they legitimately are a candy bar. So if you wanna order a Built Bar, go ahead and click the link down in the description box. It will automatically take you over to Built Bar and automatically apply the 10% off in free shipping. Or you can go to BuiltBar.com and use my code here on the screen for 10% off in free shipping. Definitely, you guys, this is a staple on WW. I don't think anyone should go along this journey without the Built Bar. So every day I have this as my morning snack keeps me full till lunch. So this is what I'm bringing this week for snack. Thank you for joining me on another WW Weekly Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the recipes that I shared with you today. Every single one of the four recipes is absolutely amazing. You're going to love them all. They will all be linked down in the description box below. So definitely check them out and make them for yourself and your family they're delicious. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to make sure that you feel very welcome. If you would take a moment and subscribe, hit that little red subscribe button and the bell so you're notified 
every time I upload a new video. I'd love it if you'd thumbs up this one. Comment down below. Let me know which of these recipes are you most excited to make. Maybe it's all four of them, but let me know what you're excited about. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you head on over and join my Facebook group. We are just about 7,500 members strong of the most amazing, positive, wonderful people. So head over to my Facebook group. It's here on the screen for you and join the fun. You're going to get a lot of personal information. I share very first four most exciting news on my Facebook group. So come and join us. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.